So welcome back to the third part of this tutorial um, where we're gonna learn how, to, no wait, we're not gonna learn, but uh, I'm gonna show you how I would do uh, stuff like this and like um, I say a lot of time like and so I won't say like anymore. So I'm gonna show you how I do this interior scene visualization starting from the <coughs> DWG drawings or the PDFs or whatever. Uh, in the previous parts we organized the scene and we um, we divided everything in collections and blah blah blah. Only thing I did off screen um, was this uh, cupboard on top. Um, I used the same method as for the um, for the bottom part. If you didn't see that, I highly recommend you seeing you th seeing that. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm upgrading all the time in my hardware. No, I'm not upgrading, upgrading the hardware, but I think this is the first time I record in 4K. Um, because I uploaded the last video in 4K, but it was actually just in, in 1080p. And so, anyway, welcome back to the third part. Uh, if you are, if you are, if you came until here, I mean, it's tough. It's tough. Um, complimenti, I would say in Italiano. Anyway, uh, today what we're gonna do um, is actually trying to um, work a little bit with the camera and with the materials and starting to set up the scene even more. I have a lot of uh, unnamed things here and so I'm going to to rename them and name the cup board. And this for example is the other cup board. And so we named that also cup board, cup board, cup board. And then this is the cupboard front. And this is also the cupboard front. Oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. Cupboard front. So naming everything is really helpful, as we said already, to uh, to find everything back. Once you're looking, to you're looking for it in the scene, I have to talk slowly. So I'm gonna form. See, I can't. I cannot talk slowly. I'm gonna force myself to talk slowly. Anyway, uh, rename everything. It's much easier to find it uh, because you see, as you can see, we're starting to have multiple collections here. And so it's way, way easier to, to find directly what you're looking for instead of having it just name uh, plain, 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 plain. Um, so what I, g I was gonna say is we start to set up the scene uh, the cameras and the lighting and start, uh, just start to understand where do we want the light to hit, which which camera perspective we, sh we should have and stuff like this uh, before we actually go into details like uh, the sink and all the stuff. So what we're going to do is press uh, Shift A and add a camera. We're going to bring it right away in his own collection, camera. Um, because if we have multiple objects, multiple cameras, then of course um, it's easy to understand. Uh, shortcut to position the camera wh where are you looking is um, Control Alt Zero on the numpad and it just snaps the camera where you're looking. Um, I highly recommend you to install this add on, it's free. It's called um, Render Button. Uh, there is the link. I suppose in the description because I put it in the description, but you, if, if, if it's not there, you just have to Google render button and you have this super, super useful um, uh, layout here, um, additional layout where you're actually able to add cameras, for example, where you're looking and have different custom, you can go through the cameras like this. You can have single customization for cameras. And what's really, really, really helpful if you're doing like um, interior visualizations, um, it's limited like this, that you have just one single view. Most of the time clients are, we're going, are going to ask you to have multiple views of the same room, or object or whatever. And so doing like this, let's say if we have uh, different, different views, then there is this magic uh, button here that says render all cameras and then you could just press it and then it renders one after the other and this was actually an issue when I started doing uh, professional renderings for interiors um, because I sh every time I had to wait until one rendering was done um, in order to start the other one and so sometimes render took like one hour stuff like this and so I had to 
wait one hour actually going away and coming back in one hour and then start a second one so um, having something like this maybe it's possible also to do it um, with blender i suppose with the timeline if you create like a s an animation where you snap different cameras then it would be possible but like this i can have like 10 visualization and i can go uh, i can start it in the evening and i come back in the morning and everything it's done for me and this is really great so i highly recommend you to install it uh, there is uh, other features uh, like for example um, we can go into the camera by pressing this viewport here then we can lock into the camera and then the camera uh, moves with us and that's also really helpful we can adjust the settings of the camera and for example let's say like a wider angle because we want to see more details and we can have something like this and then maybe we could say okay i would like to see um, the whole kitchen and so we could say like something like this or we could go just really inside and we could say okay this is a nice view maybe we want to see also a little bit on the bottom of this thing so we try to keep the the top of the window also there and we rotate it a little bit again and so we have this once we add like depth of field it would be nice because this would be blurred out and then we have a nice central perspective of course you can <coughs> also change the um the size of the camera you want we don't need it for now oops uh okay uh 1080 we don't need it for now oh, sorry, sorry. always remember to uh uncheck lock camera because otherwise as you saw um you start moving things around anyway we can save at this point and uh, so we position the camera so we know for example it's very important from the beginning to decide where you position the camera because then you won't spend too much time into details that at the end you won't even see um, this means we won't for example do anything over here because of course um, the camera won't see it and so you don't um, uh, you need to spend time in putting something there so it's very important also when you ask the client one of the first steps um, once you build st the block out in 3D, you you're gonna start to ask, okay, which 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 perspective uh, perspectives you wanna have, which views you would like to see, and um, so that when you start building the stuff and going into details, then you don't lose, as said, too much detail on things that you won't even see because maybe you spend like hours in doing like super nice detail on the wall and blah 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 and objects here and everything. And then you won't even see it so if you know it from before uh, if you know it before then you can um, of course concentrate on the important parts anyway as always i talk a lot at the beginning of the videos it's already 10 minutes gone like seven minutes gone great and I always try to be quicker so i can go and drink to slow the process even more mm. anyway so now we have the position of the camera and now um, we could go either with a fan with a fenster. Fenster is the German word for window, finestra in Italian, ventana in Espanol, si quieres. Um, so we could go with the window or we can go with sink. I would say we go first with the window. So window will be of course part of our room. Um, how are we going to approach this? We could make a super detailed <coughs> super detailed window we could make it like a simple one um for now i think we're gonna do with a very simple one as always like we said the other times we just take what's already there so we won't do like um uh, like um forms from scratch but this since this is the exact same size as the window we're gonna take these edges shift d to duplicate them and p okay to divide it by selection and by selecting this we have now the exact form of the window we know uh, we need um let's go into front view the more suggestion is um to make it a little bigger uh like this slightly bigger because the problem is that um if you do i always i never i swear i i don't burp that much just in my videos i have to burp anyway um we make it a little bit bigger because at the end it's possible that if you have like um, two surfaces or two objects intersecting then it's it's not possible at all that lights pass through but if you just put it like like this like one uh, to another like as you can see like between my finger it's a little bit of light 
super nice uh, super nice examples I'm making here but just proving the point and then this would show in the render and then maybe you see after you do, do you do the final render and of course you can retouch it in Photoshop but in order to avoid it just make it a little bit bigger and trust me it will be good so um, we go into edit mode and we actually can start to make let me hide the roof for now let me select again we can start to add a little bit of thickness to our window so into edit mode we select everything we press one to go into vertex selection e to extrude and go into pressing y i think i extruded two times let me see yeah i think i did i think i did okay sorry so we press one i think let me see okay it's it doesn't care what you what you what you press one or two one every time i noticed also by my last video when every time i say i press one or two it's just i'm going through the selection modes if you can see on the top left corner if uh, by, by pressing one two or three you're switching between vertex selection mode vertex select edge select and face select and so um you always have to skip all the time here and there in order to select what you need to select anyway we did we gave it uh, a thickness now what we can do um i would say we select everything we press e to extrude and then ask to cancel the movement and then we're gonna scaling it but pressing shift y so we're gonna scale it on the z and on the x axis but not on the y axis so it just it just holds the thickness otherwise if you just press s then it makes it also smaller and thinner but we won't we don't want that um, so we give it a little bit of thickness and now we have our beautiful window frame already there what we can do of course a window if you notice if you have a look on windows <laughs> you have a little bit of gap between what we said the other time also about the bevel is also very useful very useful without an h in front of it so not useful it's very useful to add a bevel that's beautiful uh, this will be maybe we <coughs> for sure we will have like some some flip normals uh, in order to see this you can go and you see sorry sometimes they just talk ahead of myself uh, if we add the bevel then you can see we we have this weird let me see if we find another spot no just here we have this weird um, stuff going on here and that's probably because the normals are um, flipped in the wrong direction if you don't know what normals are every surface had a, um, a perpendicular line going outside the surface and um, all the normals have to look in the same direction because you always have an inside and an outside of an uh, image and sometimes it's flipped face orientation if you can see uh, sorry if you go here into overlays and you it can enable face orientation you can see that the program right now let me hide the window for the time being uh, thinks that this side i don't know why but maybe it's how we build it this side is uh, inside and this is outside but that's wrong and if you see for example the floor it's like uh, correctly because the inside and this is the outside um, anyway we have to select the wall so uh, we could try first of all by selecting everything <coughs> press shift n and it solved our problem beautiful so we can disable face orientation and now if we go here into bevel mode now you see that it's fixed so um, it's it's a good practice if you sometimes just uh, just toggle this face orientation to see because this affects also for example refractions and some materials and stuff so uh, um, just every now and then just check that uh, um, all your faces are correctly oriented let me save now that we fixed it anyway and now we added a little bit of um, a little bevel there as said <laughs> last time maybe it's wrong by the earliest go with odd numbers and now we have a tiny tiny bevel if we bring back the um, the roof or the ceiling um, now we see the other room it it already feels a little much better because of course if you have a look at your walls I have my wall and my window right from this side and I can see it's not super sharp there is a bevel it's actually a pretty big bevel and so we can also go a little bit crazier and make it like this and then select the object right click shade smooth and this is uh, and here for example now that we pressed shade smooth what is happening we see these weird shadows going on here and this is why 
the bevel is applied on every edge. If you look in the in the limit met method of the bevel is set to none. This means that if we have to look, if we have a look into edit mode and, and if we, how can I see it here? Uh, show me vertices, I just, oh, I thought I could, I was able to see it from here. But anyway, as you can see set to uh, none. If we go to angle, for example, it just bevels the angle that you are saying here so it just bevels angle above 30 degrees and so it fixed as you can see we can talk about it again it fixed this because it's actually if we if we were for example to apply this bevel like this you will see it added a bevel also on those lines that actually are planar lines and we want um, we don't need this so if we go back before applying it you see that it's not a bevel there and for example if we go to angle and we would like apply this one, then we would see it just added the bevel on the angles. Anyway, um, so that's that. Um, so we have a window, we have uh, so a window opening, a window frame, and then of course, um, what is always in a window, you can have a look at your own windows. We can even make this a little bit bigger because um, all the time you have a the hole the puncture hole and you have the window frame and then the window itself and so it's different pieces and so like we did before for the for the furniture this is also this is a, for example a nice detail that i want to spend time of it a little bit not too much but because it it's as we said before it's like right in the middle and so if, if we would do like um, a super fake window just like just a plane like that then it would be super central in our image and we want to avoid that anyway i was uh, as i was saying we uh, we have window window frame you can have you can look at your own window windows you can see uh, uh, references how windows works <laughs> anyway we have the frame and so that's that and then we have the window going on top of the frame as we said before we select geometry that's already there and shift D duplicate P selection bam and we have this this bad boy here then we can select it we can make it a little bit thinner because of course the I'm pressing S and Y actually I can see from from where is scaling it that the the origin is here because this is a part when you take a part of the um, existing geometry it just le um, leaves the origin where it was in this case it's a little bit tricky because one when we want to scale it then it it's super slowly because it takes account of the origin anyway we can fix it by set geometry uh, set origin origin to geometry and now it's in the middle and now if we scale it it scales like this nice um as we were saying we select everything s y and we make it thinner and then like we did before for the frame we press E, ESC to cancel the movement, S and Shift Y, and we go inside a little bit like that, and then we can bring it a little bit outside. Uh, to center, sometimes you find yourself, for example, let me see, you're here and you find yourself, you want to zoom on the window, but you know you can't rotate it, then uh, you can select the object and press comma on the numpad, and it centers the pivot point of your rotation into the object you're looking at and so you are you restore your visibility ah oh, it took so much anyway now we have the window i can see we can make it a little bit bigger because it's overlapping the um it's overlapping the window frame of course because it has to close and to be closed i don't know um then we will have a glass maybe we don't know if we want uh, a glass so i'm Control R in the middle, then Control B to add a bevel. Ay, ay, ay. Control B to add a bevel. This is the same thing as before. You see now it's happening something weird. That's because for sure um, the normals are flipped again. And so we see face orientation and you see we have weird things going on here. Now we take the window, we select everything, Shift N and it's fixed. Also for the frame, A, Shift N, bam, and it's fixed. Um, I'm always not sure, for example, in this situation, you know, this is like the outside 
and this is the inside. So the theoretically, it's correct, but should I have the inside in the inside? I mean, the outside in the inside in this case? Um, I will do it. I will just flip, just flip the hell out of this normals. Just flip it. And you see a little, um, a little menu pops out here and you can toggle inside, outside. And so we make it like this. All right. So let's save again. Face orientation. So as we were saying, we have this line here, comma to center it and control B to bevel. Now it's fine. Mm, like this. And then we can make like a little hole by pressing E and then S shift Y. And now we have a nice hole where we supposedly have our window. Uh, after that, we can add a little bevel to it to make it like a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer. We can go with three, for example, and that's pretty much it for our window. And that's really nice. Of course, um, we said we want to add some, some details. So what we're going to do, just super quick and super easy. We're going to place our cursor there, shift A. We're going to add like a cylinder. Uh, 32, we can make 16 here. Go into edit mode, select everything and make it smaller. Hello. Hello. Ah, okay. And S shift Z. So it's scaling not on the um, Z axis again. And now we have like our hinges or like what it, what appears to be a hinge. Maybe they're too big, but I don't care. And usually a hinge is like three pieces. So we just make it super quick and we make, we want to have a zoom in in this situation. So we make a um, loop there and then we make a bevel and we press E to extrude, S, Shift, Z. Maybe I'm too quick, but I don't care. Shade smooth. And then we go here. When you do shade smooth, it tries to fake the roundness of the object and you can see uh, for example in this case if i isolate this object um by pressing this is like the normal situation by pressing shade smooth then it it treats it like it would be i'm getting messages um it it treats it like it would be um rounded but it's but it's not um sorry for that <coughs> Sorry for that, I'm super distracted about everything. And what we're gonna do, we could make like edge loops. If we would say we make an edge loop here, for example, then now he, he knows that he has to round between these three edges, like the subdivision does, but just with the shadows. And now it looks already much better. But of course we are adding geometry and the more geometry you have, the slower will be to calculate the render at the end. So what we can do, we can go into the object data properties, normals, auto smooth, and now it's perfect. Bam, and we have our inch there. Nice. Then we can take this and by pressing this time, not shift D, but, oh, it's, it's dirty, my, my keyboard is dirty. Uh, by I get distracted from everything, I'm sorry about that. Um, by pressing this time, not shift D, but alt D, and Z to move it on the Z axis, we bring it down. And um, this time we did it with Alt D because remember Shift D, it's a copy of the object and they're not linked. So if I would like move and modify this object, this stays the same. But since we, when you do Alt D, you actually create a, a linked duplicate of the object. And so if we're gonna to modify this, then you can see this one is also going to be modified, but this also too, because it's linked. And it's very useful when you're going to apply materials, when you're going to, when at the end you say, oh, okay, the, the inches maybe um, they're, they're too big. So let's say I don't have this one. Uh, so you say this inch is too big. Um, that's what you're going to do. You're going to wireframe, you select this, and you make it a little bit smaller. And then, of course, you modify also the other hinge. And that's very, very helpful. It saves you a lot of time. By the way, another important thing I wanted to show you is you can see if I press set here, I have uh, maybe more menus than you have. I think I have two more. Um, I recommend you to do this because you will see later, for example, if we go into, into render mode, 
um, sometimes you get distracted by the lines and the selections and everything and then you can do like this toggle overlays and then it's super clean um, sorry for that <laughs> um, so uh, let me show it again uh, if I go here into edit preferences and then on the key map preferences and then you enable extra shading pie menu items and then you can see by you go here and make save preferences and then when you press set you have these extra menus which are super super handy like the x-rays for example but the the one i use the most is the overlays because the overlays then uh, you see it's super clean and if you bring it back again we have the grid and maybe we have something selected the cameras and the lighting and blah 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 and so you can have a clean image of everything anyway back on track let me re put this nope Woohoo. let me re put this exactly and we save <coughs> anyways now we have our window done we have our linked ingest and you can see it's like barely visible but it will make the difference definitely um we save it again i will save it again again and how long are we, are we, is it taking me 27 minutes for nothing so we just spent 27 minutes on one window and i think it's definitely too much so are we gonna think a second if i'm going to continue this uh, i think i said a lot of important stuff um and so yes yeah, i'm gonna leave it <laughs> um i just said a lot i think i said a lot of important tips and so um you know what we're gonna make a longer video this time we're gonna make like one hour i think um anyway so we did the window we can rename it f2 and we name it window we go into the window frame and of course you guessed it window frame and then we have the hinges and we can call it hinge and we can call this also hinge nice we save and now we have in our room we have uh, the window and inside the window we have the no inside the i oh know they're not they're not oh, okay because they're not parented okay so we have the hinge and hinge one nice 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 now since we know what we're looking um, at we are gonna add uh, we're gonna start to add the details so let me go into top view enable wireframe bring back the reference and have a look here so we have the um, Kochfeld. Kochfeld is the the uh, cooking plates, and then we have the spüle. What we said in the first episode, I think it was that's the sink. It was it still is the sink. So the sink will be here on the left, and the um, Kochfeld will be on the right. So let me see what we can see from our camera. So the Kochfeld will be here, and the okay, beautiful. So the, here we will have the sink, and here the Kochfeld. So another very important uh, add-on i would definitely suggest to install is chocofur model manager i think i will make uh, a separate video about this how to build you let me switch position how to build your own library which is really 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 helpful because then you can you can build your own stuff your own stuff and then put in here and then just by clicking something for example uh, let me go into do, 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 accessoires um, be, 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 be cooking maybe it's here we have a sink mm -hmm. we have something like this we have the oh we have the cooking things so let me let me make another category here and we call it like kitchen uh, elec e e e e electro stuff kitchen electro stuff <coughs> and you have uh, once you install it by the way then um, it comes it's free downloaded from chocofur.com i think and it's a very nice website where they have beautiful models that actually i think the most interesting part is that it's actually pretty cheap but it's not that uh, the most interesting part is that the models are super 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 small sizes and so you don't have to have like a huge huge terabyte of library but uh, they are really i don't know it's magic <laughs> they just manage it to to keep them the size really small and so it's super also if you put in the models and stuff they, they are great guys 
Um, anyway, definitely suggest that at least you install the, the add-on and then you can build in another video. Maybe I will put it also in the description once I will done it, do it. Uh, once I will do it, I will put it in the description and where you can actually build your models. I did a test, for example, um, where I, I built this beautiful pillow here, this beautiful cube pillow. And then we would say we won't have it here. Model input location, we put cursor and then we add the asset and we add this beautiful kiss and I uh, pillow I did. It's not a pillow, it's actually just a, a grumpy cube. Anyway, mm, what we need this time is here on the cooking. I believe I have other stuff, but let's say we add this asset. We don't need this one because it's a modern kitchen. So we have like these fancy, fancy plates and look at that with just a couple of clicks. Let me go into top view and go here and just place it like this and scale it a little bit because it's a little bit bigger. So I won't scale it also in the, in the height. So I'm gonna just into edit mode and adjust the dimension like I need it to be. Uh, so this is an, another very important um, very important tip is that, um, look at that. And now with a couple of clicks, we have a cooking plate. Um, a very, very important tip is that um, look for models online and you can find, uh, you will always find something that's very, very similar. Um, uh, referring to what you need. For example, you need a cooking felt and you will say, oh yeah, I, for example, I hate this this handles here so you can just have this model and select everything i'm hovering just by the way uh, over the stuff let me let me close this one i'm hovering um over the mesh i want to select and i press l and it just selects the connected one press x delete vertices and now they're gone forever and so as i was saying you can adapt the models um and have it like you want so we have the cooking plates like that, super easy. And now we need a sink on the other side. Uh, let me go for a sink um, in under kitchen. We have a couple of things here. I didn't download that much. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, I think I had a couple of things we can add. We can we can make our own. I don't care. But I, I remember I had, I had a very, 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 very good sink. Furniture, a uh, furniture, kitchen. Nope, we already looked at that. Lamps, people, plant, tech, sockets. So I think we're gonna do ourselves or like we said before, like we said before, we can just take this for example and see for example there was a sink like one of them we just add them so we had at least the right proportions and everything it's nice and also let me go into isolation modes you ha we have some nice details like this stuff here that uh, of course modeling this stuff it would take a little bit of time so we we say okay let's go with the middle one because it's it's what we need i don't know if it's what we need but maybe is it Um we center it we as we did before, we go into top view, wireframe, and now we adapt this model for what we need. So we select everything except I would say, except the center because the center is circular and we don't want to mess with that. So what we can do, we can press C and go into circle selection, which by scrolling, you can make the selection tool. Wait, it's not that visible. Let me go here by pressing C, you have this tool a selection tool and you can make it bigger or smaller by scrolling since what i want to select is the middle and it's circular i make the wheel like big enough that i can select it now i missed a couple of couple of vertices there so i can go make it smaller and select everything i need and of course this is not what we want to change but we can go and press ctrl i to invert the selection and then just scale it on the Y axis, for example, a little bit, a bit too much. Mm. Let me first of all center it. And now we can scale it on the 
y axis like uh, that like uh, that dot like that like that uh, almost 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 like that and then we press again control i because this is also not centered strangely and we bring this a little bit up like this remember to save then we invert it again and we modify this sizes here and then we go into oh this was already almost good pop pop and we have this beautiful things right here and now you can see it but uh, what i wanted to show you oh this is actually rotated wow oh god oh god oh god oh god i was ah uh, yes so dumb sometimes because this is actually rotated on the other side on the other side so we have to make it wider here I won't be very precise because I'm losing so much time. So I'm gonna go all like this and I selected everything again, but I didn't want to. So I have to select again the middle and then invert the selection and then press S and on the Y axis I can scale it and then I can bring it back again. And it's like this. And then as I was saying, we save. Um, we have now a sync from the exact dimensions we need. Maybe it's not the correct sync, of course we need, but have a look what you can also do for example if you say no my sync it's completely different because it's like it's like super super long and i didn't find everything what you can also do for example you say okay this is your sync let's say you made you made like a huge a huge modern whatever i'm super rich sync and so you go like this and this is your sync and it's completely different than this one then what we could do is for example take some details you could take this part copy it or shift d and then moving on the y-axis p oh and then we did i brought it back yes and then we have these knights this this uh, this we have this knight's uh, detail here uh, we have already a piece of the sink so we hover again over it and press l and we select the linked we delete the faces and now we are left with this beautiful detail here and then you can for example build your old sync um, with and just steal this little detail so this is why you have to to just build your own frankenstein monster and um, with different models that's why it's super useful to have something like this uh, also where you can i think it's really really useful that you can see the models actual you want to import because i had it the library before uh, in like an um, a folder and then you have to go through the renderings and say oh what is it? Well, here just pop and you can add everything we're going to use it also later to add some details so anyway we have now our sync position as you can notice we don't have the hole for the sync because we didn't do a hole so what we could do there are different methods we could do like um the constructive one where we're going to go here and make an edge loop in the middle like we saw for the for the fronts and like this and make another edge loop on this side and spread it out and then select this face and select the bottom face as well press three and do bridge faces and now we would have a hole of course we would have to adapt these angles but the problem with this is that of course if your client says oh sorry i want to, to have the sink in the corner and then you say oh fridge then i have to to make it there and then just build this back and make a hole there and blah 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 so what we're gonna do is try to be a little bit smarter and always always be scared that your client are gonna change their mind and are gonna move stuff around <coughs> so as we did before for the unapplied uh, and the other tutorials in the second part i think where we did the unapplied um uh, collection um where we, we were thinking okay if we did something wrong we can modify it from there we're going to do something similar so i'm gonna go to here and press shift s and make cursor to select it so it plays our cursor there then we're gonna add a cube make it smaller like this and then i'm gonna is isolate just the two of them oopsie just the two of them 
Uh, okay, so we have just a cube and a sink. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to make um, to make the same form, uh, the same shape, to give the same shape to the cube. I selected the outer edges. I'm gonna press Ctrl B and I'm gonna bevel them. And by scrolling, you can adjust the bevel, um, the, the, the bevel segment. You can add or subtract the bevel segment like this. And all right, and I place it in the middle so, so that the, um, our form is like centered. We shade it smooth as we saw before, we make auto smooth and then we bring everything back, we save. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna select our tabletop. If you can't find it or can't select it, we named it tabletop. Um, and we're going to add a Boolean operation. Um, by this pipette here, we're gonna select this bad boy here. And if we hide it, and if we hide also this one, you can see that now, let me just isolate this. Uh, you can see that we now have a perfect hole in the position where we need it. And the nice thing about this, about this, let me isolate these two guys and just hide for the moment this. The nice thing is, um, let me show you like from here, viewport display, I'm gonna change it to wire so you can see through. If I move this bad boy, then the holes moves with it. And so, of course, if our client says, ah, okay, um, I want to have the sink there, bam, you move the hole there and nothing is ruined. Let me go back, let me save. Of course, then you would have to move the sink, but we are, we are lazy, we don't want to move both, blah, blah, blah. So we can just press the our Boolean. We can also rename it like um, uh, table, Oh, table top. Oh, what I'm doing? Well, I'm reading so wrong. Table top under slash um, hole, for example. And we press the second object, um, the sink, and then we press Control P. Uh, do I have the screencast activated? No, I think I don't think so. Keep transform, and let me screencast, please. Yes. Uh, and we parent it, uh, parented it, parent, parented it, parent, parented it. And so that if we select the sink and we move it, then the holes comes with him, you know? And then we have the hole everywhere, you know, you see, you can see it like this, beautiful. And so we save and now we have the sink, synced, synced, the sink synced up synced and linked up with the boolean cube wow uh, of course we are missing uh, the wasserhahn we are missing the blah 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 we are missing the sink i think the the water dispenser i don't know how to call it so we add a bunch of them and then we will say okay the middle one is the one we would like to have so we can say ciao ciao to the other ones we can place it in this position and rotate it. And now we have a beautiful sink. Maybe we bring it a little bit more like this. It depends, of course, uh, this is a tutorial. So if you want to have an exact type of sink, then you can have a similar one of, of the water dispenser. I will call it Wasserhand, how it's called in German. And then you can modify it and have it as, your, uh, as you prefer. What we can also do, for example, we can select the this bad guy and then again the sink control p and keep transformation and then we have again if we move the sink then everything comes together the hole and blah 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 and everything and, and everyone is super duper happy so now we have the sink we have the cooking plates and now i think we could uh, let me see we are under an hour yes we are under an hour we could uh, try to see a couple of materials in order to do that, we press Z and then go on the material preview. And we can see we don't have any materials applied except for the sink and this cooking plates here. Um, the kitchen, um, as I showed you from the thumbnail and the picture, um, it's like a pretty modern one, so it's like pretty dark. So we can add a new material here. 
just bring from the corner once once this kind of cursor shows up then you can open another page and you can close it by selecting from there and going over it um, we bring uh, the shader editor and let's say always 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 start from reference pictures i have in mind what i want to see it uh, and so i know and i already did it so of course i know what uh, what i want to see so it's like a dark gray um a dark gray uh, kitchen and like pretty mud so pretty rough and it would be fine like this um but the thing is that it's not very very um realistic like this but i would say just let's give just the simple materials at first and then um and then we can go into details so this is like mud uh, gray and we do i would start by doing everything mud gray everything mud gray mud gray by the way, you could also, w without having to go by each model and then change the color, you can select the models you want and then select the last one as the active one um, that you, where you want to copy the things and you press Ctrl L and then you can copy materials. And so everything takes the material. Um, this, 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 this. Of course, a white sink in a gray kitchen looks terrible. So um, in this case, for example, uh, Chocofort, they are really great people <laughs> because um, they allow you also to change the materials, the stuff of the, they are, they are great people. They are great. Just check, definitely check them out. Um, by the way, it's not sponsored this video, of course, as you can see, there's like maybe 20 visualizations, but I just like the guys. And so we can change the color of the stuff and we change everything to what we need. And this was just pretty quick. But now we have something like this. Um, let's make the window color. Also, the window is a little bit. Um, sometimes it it helps if you if you open the preview here. This is actually rendered rendered uh, in cycles, and so you can see how it looks. By the way, if we didn't do it for now, uh, we are already in cycles. And just turn up also here. Make 256. The ties the ties proportion is very important for the quickness of your rendering. Um, if you render with the with the GPU like I'm doing, then go with 256. That's I don't know why. Just you know, sometimes you have to trust stuff. <laughs> just trust me. It's like this. Uh, believe me. Just please do me this favor and believe what I'm saying to you. By the way, it's almost 49 minutes. So let's wrap it up with the with this third part. Um, so this is useful because uh, we can see uh, in real life the color, how it looks while after rendered. This is on the left side, it's just a preview. This is actually the render. And so um, like a window frame is like plasticky. And so it's fine if we make it a little bit more reflective than normal like this. And then we can select also the other frame and give it also the window, save. For the walls, um, we can make another material called walls. And the walls, we could do it like, I would avoid to go like plain white. We could go something, sometimes in kitchen, they do like a small creamy look for the walls. Um, we can make it super matte. And what we can also do, let's remember to save now and then. And uh, we can add a texture a noise texture and if we press by the way remember to um, go into edit preferences add-ons and node wrangler Ac activate this please do it for me because if you ha are on a texture for example you just press first of all ctrl t and you have some controls we're going through later on but if you press ctrl shift together if you hold them and you click on the texture then it applies the texture on the object and it's very useful to see what you're doing. And in this case, we don't have UVs, we don't generate it. I always, I often go with object. So it just takes the object itself, not is UVs and not the position and, and nothing. Um, it just let me, oh, nice. And um, it takes the object. And why we did um, the noise texture, let me bring the detail to zero. As you can see, the detail is like how detailed are this 
ähm, das äh, Flecken, Macchie in Italien, I don't know, just understand the word. <laughs> um, and uh, because I want to simulate the texture, if you look at your walls, you actually can see that the walls are not flat. They, are, they have small particles inside. And so this is what we try to imitate, as you can see, for example, also here. Once you're more or less happy, you could always, I would also suggest to go into converter, color ramp, and add a color ramp, because then you can control much better the things. Um, we can leave it like this for now, because we don't need it. Cont uh, Shift A, vector, bump, and we place the color output into the height amount and the normal output into the normal input. And then if we press, for example, what, what I was saying before, if we press Control Shift on bump, then you see actually the bump map once it's loaded and Control Shift on the last shader, then it, it shows you how it looks. And it looks terrible because of course we don't have any lighting, any nothing, but right away I can tell you this normal is way too much. And so we can bring it down and have it slightly I'm focusing on this side of the screen. We can have it slightly like this and maybe pass it a little bit uh, and maybe adjusting it later. I can see it's, I think it's too big still. So we can crank the scale up and it goes something like this. And that could be nice. And so we save again. And uh, once we save, we have the main colors. Now what we can do before we reach one hour, we have seven minutes. Um, I don't know, by the way, why um, one hour is just a mental, um, mental goal. Um, as I was saying, we saved. We go here. We close our collections, and we add another collection. And this time, this time we call it lights. Um, right away, if we have lights, if we want to have lights, what really useful is to go into color, press this yellow button, and add a black body. Black body is like the temperature of the light. So if we can see the preview, for example, um, the higher the value, the whiter the light is. Okay. It's like if we had hundred thousand million, then it tends to the blue. And if we have like uh, a very low value, then it tends to the red and uh, like light bulbs and stuff like 4,500 stuff like this. I find it very handy if we go with 6,500 for like a, an outside scene, if you don't have any particular influence from the sun anyway i save again and now if we go into rendered you can see that we have already much more light than before just by doing this black body trick here and um, this is something we won't see in the renderings and so we are going into visibility and on the viewport uh, uh, on the um, visibility uh, show in renders we disable this we have a bug where it still shows. So what you can do, you can go here and enable this. And now you see you have it here and it enables and disables um, the things in the renderings if something has to be rendered or not. Um, same as you do here, if you're looking for something, you just go into this part and press comma and then it, it finds for you if it's selected on this side. And then this is already um, not rendering, but we can actually also hide it. And so now it's gone. Um, another thing you can do if we have a big uh, scene, we don't need about the borders. We just need the center of the image. And so we can start to see it. And this is a really, really, really good start. Um, I would say then um, next time, <laughs> I hope we will be the last time, uh, the last tutorial. I don't know, maybe you want more, but I hope it will be the last. So we are going to add actually some lightings. I'm gonna save it, by the way. We're gonna add some actual lightings because this is just a word um, illumination. We add lightings, we add um, uh, some, we go deeper into the materials. And I saw also, for example, the glass here is missing. If we see the references, we had a, glass here behind like a milky glass um, going around there and this is still missing so we're gonna add this and so we have the camera we're gonna set the lights we're gonna pump with some little details and then I think next time we can make the final render so uh, it was very very long for now but I decided to make like 
don't make too many cuts because except the one I did before I think and sometimes I do because I, I just uh, sometimes I just lose it and I talk about pure stupid shit anyway uh, I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you learned something new and next time we will be able to finish everything and so you you will understand how to build something from the very scratch from the drawings till the beginning and this is actually something you're gonna do if you want to do professionally professionally so anyway thank you for stepping by and i'll see you next time hopefully hasta la vista